In the Bible, Deuteronomy 13 says the following. Prophets or interpreters of dreams may promise a miracle or a wonder in order to lead you to worship and serve gods that you have not worshipped before. Even if what they promise is come true, do not pay any attention to them. It goes on to tell you what to do with them. Kill them. Quite simple. Um, okay, that's pretty narrow-minded, if you ask me. Just don't even pay any attention to them. Don't listen to what they say, even if what they say turns out to be true. Um, sounds kind of, in a sense, almost skeptical and atheistic, because you're just trying to get me to swallow a bunch of hooey to get me to believe in something. You're trying to sort of demonstrate how fabulous your God is, in order, or trying to demonstrate a miracle, in order to get me to sort of entice me into, um, into worshipping a false god. So, in a sense, it's narrow-minded, but in another sense, it's narrow-minded in a healthy way. Um, it's like, you know, the missionary who um, lands on the proverbial desert island inhabited by benighted cannibals and uh, shows them a watch from the West. And they look at it, wow! And he says, ah, see how wonderful this watch is? Now, step into my little church here. <laughs> I rather suspect that things like that actually did happen in, say, the 19th century when the missionary movement was at its height. Although, eh, might be at its height right now, I don't know. Um, what, does that say, what does that statement in Deuteron Deuteronomy 13 mean? How do we interpret that? Well, I interpret it as a closed-minded refusal to entertain new ideas, simply because I know the nature of the ancient uh, Hebrew, or at least I under think I know, I understand, or I've formed a picture of ancient Hebrew um, religious or priest-caste thinking. No matter what people say, worship our God. That's not your God, even if what that God preaches works. <laughs> Don't follow that God. Evidence be darned. Doesn't matter. Follow our God. Okay. Now, a couple of thousand years later, a fellow by the name of um, Vladimir Ilyich Lenin wrote, um, Every religious idea, every idea of a god, even flirting with the idea of a god, is unutterable vileness of the most dangerous kind. Now, I tend to see Deuteronomy and this little profession from Lenin of non-faith, of militant non-faith, in more or less the same light. Um, both of them are saying that this new idea that someone is get it, trying to get you to believe in, or even this old idea that people are trying to get you to continue to believe in, is vile and dangerous. Um, vile, a sense of subconscious or visceral repulsion, and dangerous, an appeal to our um, fear, our sense of um, flight or fight, I suppose is um, not that much different from the old um, be careful because this new idea that they're trying to sell you on uh, is uh, blasphemy and will land you in hell. Um, or, um, say, in the Protestant Reformation, continuing to follow this church that has been completely corrupted by Satan will land us in hell, so we have to change our ideas. Um, fear can be an interesting motivating factor. Repulsion can be an interesting motivating factor. And I think that when you adopt an ism, be it theism or atheism, um, when you adopt an ism that you say that you're going to sort of say, all right, here's my clink, here's my flag that I'm going to plant in the ground, and this is the position that I now have, um, you tend to sort of look around for reasons to bolster your position, and your position starts to lead you around, um, and you start to sort of accept, this has been, by the way, only my experience with adopting isms, um, the stuff that happens in my own mind, by the way, I can't, I don't know what's going on in anyone else's mind, but when you accept an ism, that ism starts to lead you around. 
and it starts to lead you around in ways that you don't quite notice are taking place. Atheism um, can, and not in all cases, and probably not even in most cases, but it can lead to the uh, Lenin response. It's dangerous and it's foul. Um, the same thing as uh, we were warned against in Deuteronomy. A lot of Lenin's writings uh, do come across as the um, thundering uh, pontifications of an Old Testament prophet. I think that there's no ism out there that is immune to that kind of thing, and I worry about isms. It's not so much that I'm against atheism or theism. Um, I tend more towards atheism, but I don't want to call myself an atheist because that, again, becomes something of a millstone hanging around my neck, something of an albatross. I am now beholden to that ism, as opposed to just keeping my options open at all times. Um, if you keep that in mind, you can't really, you don't have to worry about uh, these two people that were warning you against things, because you say, okay, that's a wonderful idea, but my main point here is to keep my options open at all times. So this new idea, I don't have to reject viscerally, or uh, in a sense of fear or revulsion. I can just sort of say, okay, I like that idea, but my sort of ism is not <laughs> subscribing to isms. Um, that in itself, I suppose, can create new problems, but I tend to see that as a tool more than an actual belief. No isms. Neither atheism nor theism. Um, <clears throat> shutting things out as possibilities is an unnecessary narrowing of uh, what's in front of us, what we can analyze to make sense out of things. If you say that this area over here is not to be pursued because it conflicts with my ism, then I'm not going to follow it, then you've blocked out a certain field of vision. Your vista, as it were, has a lot of blank spots on it now, blind spots. Um, it's not so much that I have an issue with atheism per se, by, again, a lot of people just say, oh yeah, you're just, you just don't want to be called an atheist, um, but you are an atheist. Um, well, that's, that's something that I think that a title that people want to apply to me, which may or may not actually be accurate, but I don't like the idea of the ism, and it's not on some sort of, again, it's not some sort of fear of isms, it's just, I think I understand something fundamental about isms. Uh, they become the horse and you become the cart when you have an ism attached to yourself. Um, so again, while I am broadly sympathetic to atheists, um, I think that, in a sense, atheism um, is something of a limiting thing. Ironic, isn't it? Whereas um, atheists often see themselves as someone who is simply um, jettisoned something else that is limiting. Dogmatism can come at you from many quarters, and it can surprise you um, how surreptitiously it can get, get hold of you. Thank you.